Hi, welcome to a very special episode of the Flywheel Film Show. That's right, coming to you from Lane 6 of the Pinewood Social in Nashville, Tennessee, I am Justin Mize. And I'm Jordan Schieffer, coming to you from Lane 9 of the Pinewood Social, also nice. in Nashville, Tennessee. Tonight, we discuss Jordan's recent road trip and the future plans for Flywheel Films content. And I explain how I fit nearly eight hats into my Miata on my cross-country road trip. You guys may have noticed there's a couple things different about this particular episode. Yes, for starters, we're actually in the same town, physically, geographically. Um, we're, we're literally in the same location, in fact. Yeah. And for those listening, we finally, we, we have to come clean. <laughs> yeah, we aren't in the locations we say we are during our introductions. We're liars. Necessarily. We may throw some truth in there every once in a while. Yeah, but mostly we're liars. <laughs> Um, but we are liars who have decided to film this special 25th podcast episode and put it on the YouTubes for people to view. That's right. So if you're watching this, you know that we're not at the Pinewood Social. And if you're listening now, you also know. <laughs> so yeah. Jordan, why don't you just ask what we're drinking? So we'll get that yeah, over. Yeah, but first, what are we drinking? <laughs> uh, well, I am having a root beer float. What are you, five? <laughs> Says the man drinking a Michelob Ultra. Yes, I'm proud. Uh, what are we talking about tonight? You know, actually, well, so I wanted to discuss a couple things, but first, we got to plug ourselves, obviously. Um, if you don't know, Flywheel Films is was started on YouTube. Jordan, our main cinematographer guy, Austin's trying to get into it. And actually, yeah, as of right now, he's filmed and edited mostly a, the first video he's going to put up on YouTube. So that may actually be up by the time you guys view His this. His first video is in production. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's exciting, but Jordan primarily has been doing stuff on YouTube. So the Flywheel Films YouTube channel is where a lot of like the really cool cinematography content, car content is. And so for my so Flywheel Films started there. You and Austin did that. I wasn't really a part of the picture yet. Um, we also have an Instagram. That's the dot flywheel dot films, right? I think it's just the Flywheel Films. It's just the Flywheel, flywheel Films. Zero <laughs> dots anywhere. No, it's just Flywheel Films. Oh, no the. <laughs> flywheel Films. We'll throw, we'll throw it on the screen for those of you who just can't keep track of what Justin said. I don't know what the internet is. Uh, so we do have YouTube and we do have Instagram. So check us out on there. Give us a like, follow, subscribe, ring the bell, all that kind of stuff. So we got to plug that first. Tonight we are going to be talking about, so you've been driving across the country, Jordan, in yes. your tiny ass Miata. So that's impressive in and of itself. We're also going to talk about some of the new content that Flywheel Films is putting out on those channels, the YouTube and Instagram channel. Um, and we got a couple other things we'll throw in here as well. So I guess we can just go ahead and get started. What do you want to talk about first? Yeah, we'll get into those in just one second. But first, <laughs> <laughs> the news. I mean, uh, uh, the Daisy of San Mm-hmm. No, we're going to, let's, let's talk about this, this, so this trip I'm on in a Miata. I'm kind of proving a point. I'm trying a bunch of new things. First of all, I'm going a bunch of new places. Um, other than Nashville, I've been to Nashville, what? 800 times. Yeah. Yeah. This is, um, hashtag crash Nash 14, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, it's been a lot since you moved here in 2012, 2013, 2013. late 2013. Yeah. So I've frequented Nashville, but the rest of the trip was actually, this is my last stop on my Eastern segment. So I'm actually heading, or I went to Scranton, Pennsylvania, made it all the way through the middle, um, Midwest, I almost said Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good place to go right now. <laughs> made it all the way through the Midwest. It That stretch between Denver, because for those of you don't know, Denver is on the edge of the mountains and the Great Plains of the Midwest. So I left Denver, went through the Midwest for about 20 hours, was it was just yeah it was rough. I did have a couple stops. Um, stopped at my friend Brian's house and then at a random Airbnb in Richmond, Indiana, which was really cool. That was a 1800s Victorian mansion with eight fireplaces. Probably cost about 50 grand because it's <laughs> in the smallest town imaginable. Um, very sweet couple. The uh, husband made stained glass and the wife did gardening and made jam. So <laughs> that. <laughs> That checks out. Yeah. That's rural Indiana. But it was really fun because she's she ended up loving and talking about my Miata a lot because it reminded her of her first Miata she bought new in 1990 when they first came to the U.S. 
in white with the black top. So it gave her lots mm. of good nostalgia feelings. Um, oh, so not even just the same car. We're talking like the same overall look. Yeah, yeah. So she she was very, it made her day. Um, and so then I headed on to, I went through Ohio, which does exist. Um, <laughs> well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. You think you drove through Ohio, <laughs> but... Really, we're not sure what hap- what took place between Indiana and Pittsburgh. Well, it's very intriguing because I passed through the border of Indiana into Ohio, and it was suddenly extremely foggy. I got some great photos with fog in them, but it was foggy, and not just in the morning. It didn't burn off. It was foggy all day, which I think is what they use to hide what's going on in Ohio. Yeah. I think I saw a few establishments of probably government officials changing the batteries and the birds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was Austin's theory. Isn't that the, isn't that the joke? Like that's why that's what COVID was for because they needed an excuse yeah. to change the battery in the birds. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Ohio was fine. I went. The only place I stopped at was Columbus. Found a really gorgeous coffee shop um, called Bottoms Up, and it was really clever because their text was all upside down. Um, that. <laughs> So Ohio man, I say, well, the Australians be right at home. <laughs> yeah, finally something they can read. All right, all right, mate, finally something we can read. <laughs> I don't know if that's um, a good Australian accent or not. Well, it was, it was amazing. I stopped. I crossed the border from Ohio to Pennsylvania. Boom! Immediately gorgeous, rolling <laughs> hills, Appalachians. It's kind of the northern Appalachian region. The trees immediately became colorful. I was kind of disappointed because, like Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. Mostly green. I was like, oh, man, we already had peak fall in Colorado. But Pennsylvania, stunning trees. Stop for some more drone footage, some more photos. Finally got to our friend Jason's house in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yes, they moved to Scranton, not because of the office, but because of jobs. <laughs> but <laughs> And not jobs at the office. It's a completely yeah, different job. Turns out there's more than just a paper company there, although that is a very famous paper company now. It's, it's <laughs> not called Dunder Mifflin. It's called the Pennsylvania Paper Company, I think. Which is kind Lunder of Diflin. Boring, yeah. But uh, lots of fun office stuff. Um, that was cool. Gorgeous areas. Lots of Irish pubs. That's pretty much all we did. Introduced me to Buffalo, like proper Buffalo sauce. Turns out the Midwest doesn't know how to do buffalo. Yeah, so I've well, I never really cared for buffalo sauce a whole lot, um, but we grew up in the same area, so I imagine I'd, I'd I didn't have no either. Idea what I was like, no, Jason, is. I hate buffalo. He was like, no, hold that, listen, let's go get some buffalo chicken pizza. And I was like, sorry, what? <laughs> it was amazing, and I had my first young yingling. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was this the story where you went into the bar and you yeah. made a joke that didn't didn't quite land? I walked into the bar and I was like, let's kill some younglings. And the Star Wars fans and me were upset. And then I realized I mispronounced yingling. I just never knew how to say it. So, yeah, that was rough. <laughs> let's, let's down some younglings. Okay, Anakin. Um, um, okay, so I guess I want to ask, mm-hmm. like, what was... What were you hoping to get out of this road trip? Like what what started the whole idea of the road trip and kind of sparked that that desire? I kind of felt like I needed a getaway, and my job is such that I can actually do it on the road. Um, so I was like, I have no excuse. So I kind of put together this idea of like I have really good friends I hadn't seen in many years. I mean, it was like four or five years since I'd last seen Jason. Um, then I headed down to DC, Washington DC and I, it's, it's twofold. I mean, I never, I hadn't seen these friends for a while and I'd also never been to like the Northeast. Mm-hmm. So the furthest Northeast I had been was Salem, Ohio, which actually, yeah, backtrack a little bit. I went to Salem, Ohio, which no one does <laughs> to go to the dealer. I bought my car from two years ago, saw the original owner or actually he, his Sister was the original owner, but so you went back to a place nobody goes to twice. Yes, yes, and I got to see the original or the the previous owner, uh, original owner and his family, and he was ecstatic to see the car. I mean, he yeah, it was it was a a blast. So that took, must have been pretty cool because I mean because that car I remember when you talking about the story when you bought it, it was. A great value because they didn't really know what they had. And I imagine in that area, not a huge demand for small sports cars. You're talking like F-150s and Silverados yeah. and such are being sold at that at that dealership, you know. Yeah, so it was it was twofold. 
Um, and we have previous podcasts where I talk about the origin story of the car, but it was a, a great bargain in a great spot. So I bought a one-way plane ticket and drove it back. So it was fun to go through the dealer or through that town, which wasn't on my original plan, but I realized it was right on the way to Scranton. So I was like, I'll just swing by, grab a couple nostalgic photos. Oh, that's pretty cool. Keep going. So that was fun. That was that was great. To see those guys. And your Miata is on Instagram as well, right? Ghosty yes. dot Miata. Ghosty dot Miata. That has a dot in it. Yes. Okay. Correct. <laughs> He's figured out Instagram. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the and yeah, follow Ghosty dot Miata to see various places along the trip. Um, so headed down to DC. Really disappointed by the overall car culture, at least just from driving on public roads. I feel like I see a lot more cooler cars in Colorado. Um, I hardly saw anything that turned my head. A couple Supras. Um, actually, so we'll, 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 we'll intermediate my trip with a spotted segment because I want to talk about some of the car spots. And the one that really blew my mind was not expected. Two-door Bronco. I'd never really? seen one in person. The brand new two-door Bronco. The legit Bronco. We're the, not talking. Okay. Yeah, the real Bronco. It was red, That which I would never have expect one in red. After seeing it, what do they call that? Like lava red or something like that? It has, yeah, some special name. It's just beautiful, deep, like garnet red. It was, Mm -hmm. I think it was the Badlands um, trim, trim with the Sasquatch package. Oh wow! So they went like they fully loaded. It was, it was mint, and of course, spotless. They'll never take it on a trail, right? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. I saw that rolling into DC, and I was like, that's. That's I don't know. Cool. There's a lot of people getting their hands dirty in D.C. or rolling around in the mud. <laughs> Very swampy. And I, I saw actually a, a fair amount of Supras. I actually cruised into Scranton with a Supra. And Scranton really blew my mind. I mean, it was beautiful, which I did not, I thought Jason was hyping it up mm. unreasonably. Like, I thought, you know, you know, Jason, he... Kind of right. adds embellishments to things to it's make them sound better. Very excitable individual. <laughs> so, but I... It was crazy because he didn't actually talk it up enough. It was beautiful. Surrounded by mountains. Not like rocky mountains, but still mountains. So Hilly. Some mm-hmm. hills. Yeah. Yeah, imagine coming from Denver area. Like any other mountains isn't going to be quite mountains. But um, I've traveled down over to like Gatlinburg and the Blue Ridge Mountain Range and stuff like that. And it's very beautiful. You don't get the same snow caps or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but still very, very gorgeous country. And I... It's been a long time since I've taken geometry, so I didn't realize the mountains went up that far. Um, yeah. And I will say, so the seats in my car are not the best. Um, and I found out it is about 20 hours as my limit. Um, now, that does reset somewhat if you take more stops and stuff. But back-to-back days through the Midwest, I was finally like, I can't do it anymore. Which then I pulled out my purple seat cushion. Not sponsored. Not yet. Um, Wait, is that the name of it or the color? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the, okay. pur- the Purple Mattress Company. Oh, Same company. yeah. They make seat cushions for cars or desks or wherever. I did not know so that. So I have the generic one, which is just an inch and a quarter, I think. And it actually does wonders for just relief. Huh. Um, so I put that on there. And I was like, all right, I can suddenly drive all the way back and then further to California if I wanted to. So it's a good way to like mix up. The seating position a little bit. Interesting. So yeah, the whole thing of making this, making a, a point that this car is very road trippable. I got a lot of people talk to me at gas stations. They're like asking about the car, especially when they see Colorado plates. They're like, oh, did you just move here? Nope, just going through. But uh, you say it's road trippable, but the seats turned you into a seventy-year-old man <laughs> in the course of a day. Yeah, I walked into the gas station, asked for directions and a paper. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't have asked for directions. You just asked for the paper. Yeah. And they say, do you need know. directions? Like, I don't need it. Yeah, no, not me. So, I, yeah, my car was full to the brim of stuff. Actually, so much so when I got to Kansas City. That's where I actually unloaded a bunch of stuff at Brian's house. I brought him a bunch of faucets that came with the house. Like, You mean you had more stuff in that car than what you brought here? Considerably more, yeah. I, I had all the bathroom hardware, faucets, like towel rods, all that. For three bathrooms in my car, and also a splitter for my friend Jeff, or, or no, a rear diffuser that goes underneath the Miata. Well, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> General contractors can now use a Mazda Miata <laughs> to go to their work sites. 
facts. <laughs> so fortunately, after Missouri, my car was much less weighed down. And I had all my guitar equipment for playing with Jason in Scranton. So it could have been even more empty. Um, so it's very doable. Sure. But after DCS, I went down to Raleigh, saw my friends Mike and Ben, um, who I podcast with as well on a different podcast. Should we plug them? or Plug them, yes. Out of Spec Podcast. That's another one I run with those guys. Um, and it's it's a lot of fun. They've tried to get me on, but I'm too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> You just have a normal schedule. That's yeah, all. I know. They're like, hey, do you want a podcast at 8 p.m.? I'm going to bed. <laughs> now who's 70? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was fun to meet them in person for the first time because all I'd ever known was virtual. Um, mm. So got to see Raleigh, which is actually a cool town. Got some fantastic, oh, best, best chicken pot pie I've ever had in my life. Really? Yes. In Raleigh? In Raleigh. Chicken pot pie? Yes. You heard it here first. <laughs> chicken pot pie in Raleigh. Yeah, I heard. I'd, I'd have figured chicken pot pie would be really, really good in like in the northwestern states and maybe Colorado. And yeah, that's a that's a marijuana joke. <laughs> um, it went so over, went over my head. <laughs> uh, so after Raleigh, then you went down to Georgia, correct? Atlanta. Yep. Visited a friend there. So, yeah, not Atlanta, but very close. Apparently, people get all worked up if you say you went to Atlanta and didn't actually go in the city limits. Well, who would want to go into the city limits? The traffic's terrible. Exactly. I did it right. I went to Conyers, which is a very small town east of Atlanta, uh, with my friend Christian, who did all the work on my previous Miata back in Texas. That's where I know him from. So... Went to Conyers, shipped all the guitar, uh, not guitar, car parts, <laughs> <laughs> shipped coilovers. Car tarist. Yeah, I shipped coilovers, coolant expansion tank, um, and then all the fluids and stuff to Conyers. And then that's where we spent two full days, essentially, working on this car. I did so many things. Let me... I don't have the list. <laughs> so do you want to talk about it? We're filming with the list. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but basically, basically, new suspension. So I did Meister R Zeta CRD coilovers, a Dave Fab aluminum coolant tank expansion tank, because that's the one weakness of the NC Miata is the coolant expansion tank from the factory. So replace that with an aluminum one that won't explode and cause my engine to die, which is good. And then I did transmission flush, coolant flush, brake flush, differential flush, oil and filter change, the throttle body and mass airflow sensor cleaning, uh, clean the engine air filter, and replace the windshield. That was that was inaudible. <laughs> Do you know what any of those words mean? No, I imagine when you edit this, that camera is going to be zooming in on my face, and it's going to have all those Pythagorean theorem stuff going on as it slowly zooms in, and sad music plays as I am lost to the void. You so, lost me at coilovers. Basically, well, you actually dumped, summed it up pretty well. I basically built a new car. And then, <laughs> <laughs> well, so these things shouldn't have taken that long, but coilovers took so long because of rust. Now, this car is from Ohio, and it only had 29,000 miles when I bought it. That is the rust belt. That makes sense. Yes. Even with that few of miles and a car that was theoretically never driven in the winter, still rust. Not not dramatic amounts. Like it's not like the frame is rusty, the body's rusty. No, it's just mostly just a bunch of bolts. Like why did they make all these bolts with extremely corrosive metal? I don't know. So I'm just basically gradually replacing all the bolts in my car. Yeah, couldn't they just make them like stainless steel or something? You would think. So, well, whoever wants to make that happen, (laughs) ten percent is our cut. Business ideas. Yeah. It's probably, I imagine it's probably really expensive. Maybe that's why no one's done it. And then uh, one of my favorite... Oh, I, I stopped in Covington, which I had no idea what that was. But apparently, there's a TV show called Vampire Diaries. Um, and then a Dukes of Hazard. Haven't heard of it. Uh, that Tom Hanks movie. Um, Forrest Gump. Haven't heard of it. Um, Stranger Things. Don't know it. And a ton of Hallmark movies. All filmed in that town for some reason. So that was kind of cool. Cool to see, but the food is pretty mediocre. Yeah, two or really? three. Really? The That's kind of sad. Well, the food was apparently really good back in the day, and they realized, oh, people are coming here for all this stuff anyways. We can lower our quality, raise our prices, and they'll still come. Oh. Huh. So it's like America importing from China. <laughs> 
And one of my favorite drives was actually from Atlanta to here. Just coming up, what is that highway through? 24? 24, yeah. She went through Chattanooga, right? Through the Chattanooga, um, the gorgeous curve, the bend in the um, highway there around the That goes like in and out of three states, and you're like, what time zone am yeah. I in? Where am, where am I going? Yeah, Tennessee River, um, beautiful drive, and then came to Nashville. So I am 3,400 miles into the road trip. Wow. Um, and then heading back to Colorado. Wow. And, and you're going to be doing that just in a couple of days. Like you're pretty much blast, blasting through. Yeah, blasting through back to Colorado for a brief break and then heading out to the West Coast. Going to hit Park City, Utah. Hoping to see the guys from Everyday Driver. If you're watching this, Todd, Todd, Paul. And, Paul. <laughs> and then over to San Francisco, down the coast to LA, San Diego, and then. Might see you in L.A., maybe. Possible. That's the hope. Yeah. yeah. And then back to Colorado. So all things said and done should be about 8,000 miles. So this is a lot. I mean, this is a lot of so. Like, first of all, it's a long road trip. And I'll. And first of all, I mean, I can't believe that you fit that kind of stuff in the Miata. And it sounds like you fit more than what you actually needed. Now, granted, you're traveling by yourself. But you've also traveled to Nashville with Austin before in a previous in C Miata. That's right. Me and Austin brought all of our stuff. So many hats. You remember that? That was a lot of hats. We brought a lot of hats. Um, we had a blast cruising down to Nashville in that Miata, top down the whole way through a rainstorm. And we got so many crazy looks. But if you're doing 70 on a highway, just the rain just does this. Like, we were dry. That, that is so interesting. Wow, physics is a Science is something else. Geometry. <laughs> <laughs> It was, yeah, it, the looks we got, it was hysterical. We blasted so much Taylor Swift with Justin Bieber. It was a good time. And the trunk was packed to the brim. Mm -hmm. And then we went shopping. So on the way back, we had to do the power retractable hard top NC trick, where if the top is up, you have a second trunk. <laughs> so we just left the top up on the way back, filled the second trunk with all the things we bought at the malls. Huh. Well, I think... Uh... I don't know if I kind of want to go right into the misconception that you can't take a small sports car on a road trip. And I mean, I think most people understand that you could do it by yourself. Cause like, even if you pack all your stuff in the trunk, you still have the passenger seat, but let's say you have a passenger like you did, you can get creative yeah. and pack, you know, a lot of stuff. Um, now you might have to, might have to leave home a few things, a few things at home or, how, I will ask you this. How many outfits did you actually pack? Like, are you running on two outfits for the last oh, week? Oh, no. I mean, for this trip, I think I brought, well, like four pairs of pants, like five, no, four pairs of shorts, probably 16 shirts. Like, I mean, you saw my shoes by the door. Four or five pairs of shoes. I don't know how you did it. 12 hats. Well, you had filming equipment, too. All, all the filming equipment. I mean, this freaking microphone right here. <laughs> Camera, iPad, and all my guitar equipment. You actually brought this table, too. Yeah. <laughs> this wasn't here before. I brought everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, so, yeah, this car misconceptions segment is about thinking outside the box, which is what a lot of our misconceptions segments are. For those who don't know, we have segments we do in the podcast, and we like focusing on certain things and debunking myths, more or less. That's right. And so it, it just takes... Some brainstorming. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going on a road trip. I have to have a CUV, which for some people that might be true. For others, you may just not have the minimalist mindset needed. And I will say I'm not the – a Miata is quite practical for a road trip car. A, the top does not fold into the trunk like some other um, two-seater convertibles. Mm. Um, also, the trunk's a decent size. It's about five cubic feet. Then you have – of course, the passenger side, if you don't have a passenger. If you do have a passenger, you still have that whole trunk. And like I said, if the top is up and you have a power retractable hard top, you have all that space behind the seats, essentially. Sure. Um, and then it's just, what, but what about packing? I mean, could, if it's a long trip, consider laundry in the road. I did do laundry in Atlanta. 
Um, mm-hmm. I didn't need to. I actually calculated I had enough stuff, but I was like, just in case, I was like, I don't know if me and Justin would be playing in the mud or something. Uh, sure. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, and, and if you're going on a road trip, even if you're staying at hotels, there's usually some sort of laundry service on site. And a lot of people stay at Airbnbs now, which if you get an entire apartment or house to yourself, most of them have, you can find them. And you can, I mean, if you've used Airbnb, you can list them by amenities. And so if you need to wash clothes, like if you're just like, we're taking the sports car, we're going to be gone for two weeks. And because I, if you're only going for a week, you could probably make it the entire time, even if it's two people. Um, and like I said, maybe you have to cut down what you actually bring, but you yeah. can do it. And, you know, so, so if I, if, yeah, I, if I did not have all this camera equipment or guitar equipment, like if I just had what I needed for two weeks, um, I could have fit it in about a third of the trunk, which is crazy. Um, and then of course, if I had a, woman with tons of other luggage or man we don't discriminate <laughs> I, hey, you're not gonna not gonna cancel this this time i, I, I could beat you to it i could have i could have brought someone with twice as much luggage as me and for two weeks we would have been fine only using the trunk mm-hmm. so there's really a lot of ways to think outside the box but even if you have camera equipment like it, it's all about what you do i mean people road trip in motorcycles people do backpacking trips on the appalachian trail stuff like that it's true that's taking way less stuff i could have survived with one pair of shoes just a few shirts like i, I could have gone more minimalist yeah but, but I, you had to bring all those shoes for continuity's sake as you were filming yeah. along the way <laughs> and i like my hats yeah. <laughs> So it is possible. Decent gas mileage, about 30, which is not amazing, but not terrible. By Honestly, means. that's better than what I typically get running around here in my in my Honda. Now, you're on the highway most of the time. Yeah. So, that's, so I can probably get about 32 to 35 on the highway. I pushed it to 40 before, but I hated how slow I was going to, yeah. to do that. Um, well, I, I want to talk about because... As you've been driving and you've made some mods to your car that I don't understand, you've been filming and doing vlog stuff along the way. So I want to talk about the content here in just a second. But first, I do want, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the podcast, I want to let you guys know that we are here to answer your questions. So we've uh, we put out a poll on Instagram to see what kind of questions you guys have for us. And we're going to answer them here on the podcast here in a little bit. Uh, But first I do want to talk about some of the new content that we're, that we're discussing that we're filming. uh, And that's going to be going up on the YouTube channel here in the coming weeks. We've already talked about Austin. I think Austin's going to do a walk around of his Fiesta ST for everybody. Yeah. Kind of a slightly more in-depth intro tour. It's still not super. It's not a deep dive by any means, but he is giving a, better suited tour especially with all the modifications he's done he hasn't done a ton but it's it's really well sorted um, so he took that up to colorado to see me a couple weeks ago and it was it was really a good time made him fall in love with the car all over again every time mm-hmm. he talks about selling it because he's always on face of marketplace yeah i, I just remind he has I a just, problem i tell him grab your keys go for a drive come back talk to me he's like yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> So he's got that video. Obviously, this one, um, I did a recent video on random fixes for the Miata, which is interesting because it wasn't any modifications to improve things as like, you know, it wasn't like performance or quality of life. I guess it kind of was because it was things that were broken that were kind of annoying. I was going to say, if you weren't improving anything, what the hell were you doing? <laughs> yeah. So I, I fixed, you know, had had a guy do headlight restoration. Um, he was really good. He's local. Alan underscore details. Um, check out that video to see his work. And fixed my grill, fixed uh, the rattling top on the power retractable hard top, latching mechanism. Um, what else did I do? That was oh, fixed the stereo. Well, it kind of fixed itself. I took it apart, put it back together. Works. <laughs> I don't know what went wrong. I tried to make it break again, could not. <laughs> so that's working fine. Um, now yeah. You, now you got to worry about the dash cam. Replace the glass. Um, yeah, that's was, was pretty much pretty much it. Well, then you guys, you and Austin, while he was up there, you guys did a video on painting your brake, brake calipers. calipers. Yep. So. You went with the red, like a poser. Yep. But you didn't. You didn't put a Brembo sticker on there or anything. Nope. So you didn't go like the full. I just went fun, sporty color, but not uh, a true poser, which is yeah. probably good. I mean, honestly, on a car like that, that's all black and white. I mean, you can't really do anything but red. Mm-hmm. Like I was even thinking, like you guys were going through all the, all the um, colors that were in like, Walmart or Home Depot. 
wherever you guys were at. I don't remember. Um, and I was like, I was like, well, anything like what else but red? And I was like, there's really nothing else that you can paint that except red on that kind of car. Yeah. I think Austin should paint his orange. Yeah. To match the Recaro interior. But, <laughs> um, okay. So, and then, so you guys have that video that just came out with the brakes. Um, and, and I have this huge road trip video. I have no idea if it's going to be like one, two, three videos. I just filmed a bunch of random stuff. Don't know what I'm doing with it yet, but I will be doing it in for sure separated by region. So east and west, mm -hmm. but realistically, probably two parts for each video. Right. Maybe more. Well, you could do a Guardians of the Galaxy volume one, volume two, yeah, exactly. volume three. Um, so we... I have noticed more, and it's not like we have a marketing team, so it's not like we are thinking like, oh, what do we want to do? But I know you've been trying out more vlog style um, videos as opposed to the cinematic stuff that we're used to doing. Mm -hmm. And so I guess like for you guys who are on YouTube, go out there and like watch the videos and see what you think because we want to put content out there that you want to see. And if the vlog stuff is interesting, from my understanding, that's a little bit less time consuming mm -hmm. to make because you're just holding a phone and talking about what you're doing versus a cinematic where you actually have to plan the shots, do it. You usually have to get the drone out, which I think you've done. We've, you've done a little bit for this road trip. But, um, you know, we want to hear your thoughts and we want to put out content that people like to see. One, because then we get more subscribers, more views, the name gets out there. But. You know, that only happens if we're putting out content that's in demand. So let us know it's in demand. You can you can comment. Um, you can send mess, a message to it on Instagram. You can even email us at theflywheelfilms at gmail.com. Questions, comments, li I mean, literally anything you want to send us except for spam. And also don't send us hate mail. That's kind of mean. Um, <laughs> and Send us honest thoughts, though. Yeah. And we're also all in committed relationships, so... <laughs> Nothing along those lines, but yeah, the uh, yeah, I, I think with the like the road trip video, like I'm trying kind of a new thing of a mixture of vlog and cinematic, and I I like that concept in my head. Like I I'm still a huge fan of cinematic videos; they just take so long to produce, and so I want to find that balance of more content versus still being quality mm -hmm. and i started you know peter mckinnon introduced this idea to me just of vlog style and then bam suddenly like really cool music and cinematic shots and drone shots and then back to like life like vlog style so trying sure. to make it more personalized mm -hmm. or more personal to the audience i definitely so, like that yeah so let us know your thoughts um yeah. but speaking of interacting with our fans i have some questions that's a pulled good up segue. Here. yes i have some questions pulled up here um the first question is actually pretty good and pertinent to what we've been talking about. Um, Evan underscore Schieffer, I don't know who he is, <laughs> asks, how do you embrace the road trip to get the fullest experience? Oh, that's a good question. Great question. You should probably answer this since you just came off a road trip. I'll give my thoughts later. Yes, because you've done some cross-country drives as I well. I have, but so. it's in a Honda Accord, so. Yeah, but, I mean, that that's one thing. Is it's what What's the purpose and intentionality of the road trip? The for me, this was kind of a getaway, a mental break. Like it, it really was, ironically, a better vacation than some of the vacations I've taken. But I've still been working this whole time. It was just a change of scenery, and being in the car for this long. I mean, three thousand five hundred miles. That's probably forty, fifty hours in the car, um, or more actually. Yeah. So it's a lot of time, and it's been good time for me to like listen to podcasts and what's interesting is when i listen to podcasts or even sometimes music i'll have these memories of listening to that and where i was in the moment through my eyes hmm. like visuals interesting so combining the visuals with the audio experience remembering that that's actually an interesting uh neuroscience um thing that they, that they discovered is that when you're when your eyes are moving laterally that's what happens when you're moving forward and so it's actually a really good technique for if you're in a stressful situation is that you can just move your eyes laterally and it tricks your brain essentially into thinking that you're in forward motion and when you're in forward motion you're you're not being defensive you're being confident because you have to be because you're moving forward into the unknown and so the i think it's interesting that that moving forward going past those things literally being in in forward motion and, and having that uh audio input as well as almost kind of like a um a trigger for that for those moments and, and those 
uh, periods or those areas where you were in. I think that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, I think the, the thing I learned this earlier this year, actually going down to Texas in February was I took my time getting there. I didn't have this. I, I typically have had an agenda of like, I have to be there at this time, get dinner with these people I'm going to see. You haven't seen them in a while. You're excited to see them. It makes sense. You rush there. Mm -hmm. But in no the bathroom rush, breaks. Yeah. In the rush, it's, I don't know. It, it is one way to road trip, but mm -hmm. I had such a better time because I didn't have an exact time to get there. And I left early enough, which helped. So I was able to stop many times, get some great photos, just stretch my legs, not feel like I was rushing anywhere. Um, I didn't feel like I had to speed or get like as fast as I could have got over the speed limit. And I got there <laughs> feeling really good, actually. It was 12, 13 hours of straight driving. Mm -hmm. And with those breaks for photos and just soaking in the scenery, because there's a lot of beautiful scenery between Colorado and Texas, um, I got there and I was like, I could do it again. Like I could literally keep going, which is crazy because most times I've done that drive to Texas a lot. I get there and I'm beat. I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting way. Um, yeah. Um, so and it goes back to your point. Like what is the purpose of the road trip? Like are you just – are you – is the purpose the destination? In which case that's perfectly fine. Some people don't like have, doing their road trips like that. That was how I did road trips growing up was always you're going somewhere – you're trying to get there as quick as you can because there's people there you want to see and you want to spend time with. And the, and the less time you're on the road, the more time you have with them. So less stops, um, less bathroom breaks. You're not stopping to eat. Or if you do, it, you're picking it up and going. You're not sitting down at a restaurant. And so that's a different purpose versus road tripping across the country. And maybe you're still trying to get to family. But instead of saying, let's get there as fast as we can, like let's enjoy the road trip. So Evan, I mean, you're asking how do you embrace the road trip to get the fullest experience and if your goal is the fullest experience then i would say don't drive any more than 10 hours in a day uh one i mean that's just, 10 hours is just kind of a number i'm throwing out there based on um truckers they're not allowed to drive more than 10 hours in a day so limit yourself by 10 hours mm. and then i would even say maybe cut it back a bit further and if you want if you're a planner plan spots along your route where you can stop for half an hour, stretch your legs, take some pictures, just see what's out there. And then you'll get back in the car and then you'll be ready to go for the next few hours. And this is why I think if people practice that more, I think people, more people will see that electric vehicles are actually good for road trips because they don't, they make you do that is you have to, you have to stop, you have to charge for 20, 30 minutes. So it makes you get out every couple of hours, two, three hours and, and enjoy and get more of a full experience out of your road trip. So I would just say, don't try to blast. If you want a full experience, don't just try to blast through pick spots along your route where you can stop. And like I said, if you plan, you can even pick how long you want to stop. If you're not a planner and you just want to go with the flow then say like, listen, we got to get six hours away from here in a 12 hour time period. And whenever we get there, we get there. And you know what? That that's great. And that works. That works for some people too. So I, I think the, yeah, that, that point, we'll do a future podcast soon on just our thoughts on the EV architecture and just how the expansion of that infrastructure is growing. But I think one way they should really consider is like pro prominent EV charging stops for road trips with interesting things to do, or even just you know, nice cafes. Like you don't want to be junky gas stations. Sure. And Tesla's tried to do that with their supercharger network. From A couple my of them. Yeah. Not, not as many as they said originally, but I think like going through places like Utah, like Megan and I drove through Utah and Nevada and stuff this last year on our way back from LA for Christmas. And like, I didn't see a ton of charging areas along like major highways. Like you can put EV charging stations at these in these national parks um, so that you can charge and then you got 20, 30 minutes to enjoy this gorgeous view. Yeah. I think that could be something that, uh, that companies could start doing. And, you know, you know, I don't like the government doing stuff, but if they're going to put out a bunch of fast chargers anyway, like put them in national parks. See Rivian's, I, Rivian's going to build out their infrastructure, and I, that's what I'm super excited about because they have this very like nature-focused, nature-first approach. Um, which city and state had the smoothest roads? That's from Marble underscore NC1. Thank you, Marble. Yeah, he's got to cool me out of too. 
Um, I'll be seeing him in LA actually in my West leg. I think. Oh, very cool. And so yeah, um, the state actually it probably it may not have had the smoothest roads. But coming from Ohio, Pennsylvania just felt like a breath of fresh air. The Ohio roads were not great. So came right into Pennsylvania, beautiful scenery, rolling hills, fall colors everywhere, roads were smooth. I was happy. Really? But the city itself that had the best roads was actually maybe D.C. That, that's physically speaking. The traffic mm-hmm. was horrible. Sure. The worst ever. I would just walk through D.C. if I but could. But they they've invested money in the infrastructure of the city at the very least. That's interesting that Pennsylvania had nice roads. So, but physically, they weren't necessarily nice. Yeah. But it was a really good area. Yeah. Um, and obviously, we're just talking about the states you've been through you know, on your road trip. This isn't an all-encompassing. I mean, you might have a different answer by the time you go to the West Coast. We do have a question from Sheaf underscore chief don't know who that is yeah what upcoming ev brand is the most intriguing to you i want to guess and say yours is rivian i i think it is um they they seem to have such a good understanding and like foundation on things they're they're developing things gradually they're not having crazy deadlines and then missing them and then not addressing them of course they've missed <laughs> Just, of, yeah they they've missed a bit of their deadlines but that was like Everyone's missing deadlines because of chip shortages and infrastructure changing. And um, Rivian's just doing it in a really cool way where they're putting out videos all the time on just what they're working on, what they're progressing. They're listening to their like future customers. So we'll, we'll see. They've had an interesting rollout, especially with giving their vehicles only to one journalist outlet for a while to build up a lot of early like positive press. Mm-hmm. A lot of the journalist community is questioning that. But they have now done journalist events with other journalists, and the entire montage is like good, generally good. I was going to say because Kyle from Out of Spec hasn't gotten his hands on the R1T yet, has he? No. And he's like known for reviewing EVs, so it's kind of surprising that. Now that being said, watching some of his reviews, he's he's not he's honest, and I think he knows a lot, and so he can be a bit nitpicky on certain things and maybe that's what Rivian's worried about but I've never seen him like just tear apart a car you know yeah so I anyway I don't particularly understand that that doesn't but maybe they just don't have the vehicles to to hand out but I would also agree I think Rivian's probably the one that I'm the most excited for when I did that piece that actually still I still haven't quite finished yet but I did a piece for the R1T and as I was researching it I was like this is a really impressive truck first of all and then Rivian is poised to be a big a big player in the EV game, especially if they continue pushing this whole like adventure type. Like Tesla is like, okay, we're basically the electric Mercedes Benz. It's you know minimalist Mercedes Benz type. Except of thing. for their pickup truck, which is like, we're also funding Mar, the future Martian military. Yeah. So yeah, we're not sure where they're at. Yeah. Rivian's like, oh, for those of you who buy trucks, you typically don't use them for truck things, anyways. Here's like the ultimate non-truck truck. Still yeah. does most of what a truck can do, just not quite the extremes, which is fine because Ford is probably going to start electrifying their um, bigger F-Series pickups, mm-hmm. the Super Duty ones, and Ford will be known for that. But Rivian is really engaging this like intriguing adventure first. They've got a freaking battery and Bluetooth speaker built into the truck that you can remove and take on a campsite. Like, you can pull out a kitchen. The kitchen can pull out. Yeah. Marquez Brownlee made the joke. Like they put everything but the kitchen sink. Oh, wait. They put the kitchen sink in here too. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So uh, I'm, yeah, excited for them. And Aptera. I have to throw Aptera in there. I'm really intrigued about uh, Aptera. Yeah. Our friend Patrick may or may not have ordered one. I'm not sure. Uh, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. And that's a brand that's really intriguing to me. Yeah. Um, we got a few more questions here. The first one from Flywheel Films uh, is, why is Gamora? We're just going to skip that. But no, one, no one's given us a good answer on that yet. So True. It's, we're going to keep asking it until somebody, t- still somebody explains. Why is Gamora? Uh, the Austin Schieffer says, who is your favorite host and why is it Austin, period? Uh, obviously, it's not Austin because he doesn't understand... <laughs> punctuation <laughs> um the addy schieffer austin can't read though we've established that oh so that's he didn't true know yeah, what he was he writing uh there's a lot of schieffers in here addy schieffer how do you feel about the 2015 jeep cherokee latitude that's awfully specific yeah um i, I could say it probably looked really good in white 
um, with black <laughs> accents. I am partial to that. I think it's a good vehicle. Um, but as it, as it approaches the six figure mile mark, I think that's probably a sweet spot to start thinking about selling it because it's still, everything works, mm -hmm. but it's an FCA product, which means they aren't known to last as long. And when vehicles start taking that tank dive into like things start breaking, needing repairs, even if they don't break, they just need repairs and that, that just costs a lot of money mm -hmm. and it's a FCA product. So not worth a lot. Plus with this current market. I would hands down sell it and consider maybe buying a Maverick. Um, that that's a thought. Uh, that is it, a thought. It's a it's a good vehicle, probably very good a, for dogs. Yeah. But the U Connect system, horrible. Worst car phone in a vehicle. Yeah. Never been impressed with with FCA's um, UX UI. But yeah, Ford Maverick. That's a great great little truck. Um, and Ford has some. In insane incentives for them going on right now. I mean, we're talking about 0% financing for 36 months. Uh, last I checked. So and Andy, you're probably listening at this point. Um, I would, you know, just take that in consideration. Um, I don't know. You'd have to consult with your husband, uh, but I imagine he would be very pro on that. He'd be, he'd be for that idea. I prob probably, I'm, he sounds like, he seems like the kind of person that spends the majority of his time on Facebook marketplace anyway. Um, and since he can't read, you could probably just kind of trick him into whatever you want. Very true. Yeah. Um, okay. I think that's all the questions we have. Well, guys, um, even though we're doing a special episode, please, anytime you want, send us your questions, thefywheelfilms at gmail.com. You can also send us a uh, an, an Instagram message. What's it called? Yeah, yeah. Drop into our DMs. That's it. That's what the kids are saying now. Slide nowadays. into the DMs. Uh, that's right. No, uh, no cap. Flywheel. <laughs> <laughs> this is gas. Uh, flywheel Films on Instagram and Flywheel Films on YouTube. Drop us a line, like, and subscribe. And send us your questions, your thoughts, or topics you want to talk about, things you're curious about, and have gotten an answer from from Todd and Paul because they're very busy and we're less busy. Yeah. And uh, my Miata is on Instagram. Again, follow my road trips, ghosty.miata. Um, Austin's Fiesta ST is Kona.party.st and his video will be coming out very soon. Um, maybe even before this comes out. Who knows? <laughs> and I don't have an Instagram, but I do have a MySpace. So please hit me up and let me know what, uh, what song I should play on my profile uh, next. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us for the special 25th Flywheel Film Show podcast. We'll catch you next time. You can find it everywhere. What? Google, Spotify, oh, yes. Apple. Apple. Well, and then whatever the other point yeah. one person. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you guys will find it. Uh, uh, do you actually have MySpace? No. <laughs> <laughs> I never had it. Oh, jeez. <laughs>